Thank you. I always have a statement. The sentencing of Miss Brenda Hardaway is unjust. It's a travesty, travesty of justice and racially malicious. Uh, Francis Affronte, in the interest of justice and rec reconciliation, should have sentenced Miss Hardaway to time already served and allowed her to do community service. This is a particularly harsh sentence imposed on the defendant who previously had no criminal record, was pregnant, was not a flight risk, was not engaged in the use of narcotics, nor possessed any illegal weapons. She was merely attempting to defend her brother. Mr. Affronti never should have overseen this case and should have withdrawn himself from the sentencing. This judge is biased, he's prejudiced, and lacks the sensitivity to engage women and African-American defendants and people of color. His harshness concerning Ms. Hardaway is a reflection of his support of and entanglement with the police department and law enforcement. And if you noticed the ill logic of his reasoning, he blamed everything on Brenda Hardaway in stating that she caused everything. Not one time did he point out the fact that the officer assaulted Miss Hardaway yes. and used brutal means by punching her in the back of the head. That's right. Now, suppose the punching her in the back of the head could have resulted in the loss of her child. What would he have done then? Both Affronte and Sandra Dorley desire to make an example out of Miss Hardaway. They got away with it. <coughs> they did. It was a judicial uh, uh, lynching. And how appropriate in this Lenten season, when another person 2,000 years ago was also lynched by a court. In this case, justice was not blind. It was a legal lynching which both Affronte and Dorley supported. They are the judicial pillars of the new Jim Crow in this country, where you incarcerate people of color, especially black folks, and then they're in a feeding loop where they come right back out into the black community where poverty exists, criminality exists to some extent, although people are living good lives and things of that sort, and they fed right back into the loop again. We will clearly remember both Affronte and Dorley when they come up for re-election. Thank you. Why should Any the questions? judge have recused himself? Why specifically? He specifically should have recused himself because of the fact that he is the one that tripled her bail. He called her back. And Right. He tripled her bail. Then at the same time, he called her back. Mm -hmm. And then he was the judge in charge. Mm -hmm. re up the bail. Absolutely. Yes. He never should have been involved in this position as overseeing her sentencing. It should have been a different judge. How long have you known Brenda? We've known, I have known Brenda since this situation. Uh, there are Quite others, sometime. there are others here, like Bishop McCullough, who've known Brenda much longer. It sounds like probation was talking about comments that she made and perhaps, without getting specific, that she has a history of anger and control issues and that the judge she had no record. hoping she learns she had no from record. This. She had no record. Well, not criminal record, but perhaps with other agencies, he said. So I don't know if it's something is. We don't know anything about that. What do you know about her? Can you well, we know, her we know her, and I know she's never been arrested before. Is anybody here able to say what's going to happen to her child at this point? Because I know there was some concern about her, who's going to take care of her. Her mother, as far as I know. Take we'll take care of the child. Reverend, those are, the words you use are extremely harsh. I mean, is this based on one case or is this based on a history? I mean, this is based on a history. And they said that she was not a victim, that the, she wasn't a victim. Mm -hmm. She was punched upside the head, wrestled to the ground, and there's a lot of things. No, I understand. I understand but that. She, she, they said she was not a victim. Right. Although she was assaulted, and it got turned around like the police was assaulted and right. done wrong. Right. There was but about there was a fifth, about ten cops. Did you guys recognize that maybe she could have been attacked? And nothing was said of the brother that was being attacked. Right. They beat him up on the steps. Nothing was said about that. She I, came to the aid of her brother. Right. I I I think everybody in this case 
in retrospect, this is in retrospect, could have acted different. The police also could have acted different. Uh, the police could have sent a more seasoned officer there to, to defuse the situation and, and, and deal with it. But they send these rookies, these thugs, into the black community acting like Nazis yes. and disrespecting people. And that's no longer going to be tolerated. It, it just is not. Now, John, you said a question. Yeah, no, I, again, uh, some of the things you said, lynching, uh, racially motivated sentence. Well, we see lynching going on all the time uh, uh, in America. Right. We have over one million people incarcerated, warehoused in prisons. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, are we going to keep on funneling people into prison? Nonviolent offenders as well as violent offenders. Now, violent offenders we see need to be in prison. Uh, we agree with that. But what about nonviolent offenders? There needs to be some alternatives to incarceration instead of warehousing people. When these people come out, they can't even vote. They can't even vote. It's hard for them to even get a job because the employer asks the question were you ever convicted? You no, know, she has a felony on it. Right. Now, she's got a felony in this, and, and, and that doesn't. Uh, sit well for her future. Now, Reverend, she admitted to this felony. She admitted to assaults. Right. She did admit to it, and and, 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 and and that's okay. But the question is, the question, what about the onus on the police officer? What is this officer Crow doing? He's the one that hit her. He's the one that threw his punches. He is the one that was the perpetrator in this case. Why has he not been arrested? Mm -hmm. Right. That, that, that's the whole issue. Mm -hmm. We've got to stop covering up for the police. Affronte is a great cover for the police. Let me give you one incident. I think the gentlemen know here about a couple of years back, there was, I think he was a sergeant or a police officer. He was high. All right, he was speeding on the road. Mm -hmm. He crashed into a car with a pregnant woman, right? Uh, uh, then, you know what happened when he got before Judge Affronte? Judge Affronte let him walk on his own recognizance. Mm -hmm. That's right. On his that's own right. recognizance. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, what is worse? Mm -hmm. You see, that's what I'm talking about. But he the was support. later convicted. But he was later convicted. Later but on. Later on. Affronte let him go. Right, at a bench trial, yes. much later on. But Affronte let him go. But Affronte let him go. You see? And that's what I'm talking about. Here, this guy, he was high on whatever he was high on. Okay. He, 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 he okay. used his cocaine, he used his vehicle, which he could have, was crashed into a prison, could have killed this woman. Brenda had no priors or anything like that. I mean, something could have. She served two, two terms, two months in the county jail. He could have used that as time served. He didn't do that. He's harsh. This guy should resign from the bench. Mm -hmm. what and I'd like to say this. The video, I'm sorry. There was one case that I was in the courtroom. Two separate, one white, one black, young guys. One broke in a house, another broke in a place. Mm -hmm. Told the white boy, go home with your family, son, and gave the black boy 11 years on Friday. Okay, so we know the history. Can you talk about what role the video played in all of this? The well, judge said he didn't consider it. Well, this judge is a jackass. That's <laughs> uh, the, certainly the role the video played a great role in it because it showed firsthand the problems that we have with the police here in Rochester. And that's why they sent out this survey about whether or not what does the community think of the police. See, that prompted the whole thing. Now, if the judge and his illo illogical meanderings does not want the kid to consider that as playing a vital part, that's on him. But certainly the community does. And the community is the greater judge, not fronting. One point, as, as clergy, you've thrown out words, jackass, I think you said Nazis. Yes. When we now go back to your, your, your folks and you're at the church, what, what are we going to learn from this? What are we going to tell the kids now? I mean, can we, well, can we we're going to tell them don't forget. Right. Like they tell the Jews, don't forget the Holocaust. Right. Don't forget what's happening. We're astute. We're aware of what's happening. We're voices crying out in the wilderness for justice and equality. That's what we're crying out for. Where is it? Where's the justice? Where you say there's a double standard in yes. Rochester? Absolutely. Uh, there, there, certainly there's a double standard in Rochester. When you look at poverty, which is concentrated, when you look at the rate of unemployment in the, in the black community as well as the Puerto Rican community, uh, and you look at people, and, and I don't, 
uh, condone it. When you look at people selling drugs and things of that sort, uh, it's certainly you have a combustible problem here. And then, and also the rate of the spiraling rate of violence. But then you add the police into the mix. Uh, some police, not all police. You know, some police that are good police. There are but, some good police. Right. But you have others that run wild like thugs and, and disrespect people, talk down to them and things of that sort. There's certain people that are not protected anymore. But you do have this double standard here in the community. And we have to come together as a community to really wash our dirty laundry, mm -hmm. to really look at what lies underneath and come to grips with it. So far, we've been engaged in dialogue, dialogue, and dialogue, and no action has been taken. Well, this is a call for action. Sir, what does that action to look like? Speak this with the district attorney. What do you hope to happen through all this? Well, Sandra Dorley, I have my issues with her, too, uh, because of the fact that she supported the police in this endeavor. Uh, if you look at the whole law enforcement issue from the judges to the to the to, um, district attorney, et cetera, they're all pro-police. You know? got the arrest of those kids in downtown right. to perform the practice. Right. Communities are watching. So the community is watching that, and we're going to organize. We're going to organize court watches. But at the same time, we want to look at the strategies for dealing with violence in our community, both the violence coming from the community as well as police violence. I'd like to bring this up, this point up. Rochester is the third largest city in New York State. You got your first black fireman in the 1960s. First, and in the 60s, you only had three black police officers on the force. Third largest city in New York State. So that should tell you something. See, we know our history. Mm -hmm. We study it. Do you see the conditions in the community building up the way we saw them 50 years ago in 1964? Yes, things are getting, I think, worse instead of better. Can you, can you agree Racial with profiling. I get calls every week where police harass people, drag them out of the car, beat them up, assault them, and then they say, oh, you can go home now. There's a place in the city that people come to us and say, they take us to this place, beat us up, and then let us go. This is still happening right now. Same, same thing 50 years ago. Yes. No change. Right. No change. What, what is, um, what is uh, police accountability or justice for you look like? That's what we're looking for. We're trying to get justice. Any yeah. I mean, this is uh, 2014. Things should be better. Absolutely. Should be better. And we had to really press to get more black police officers on the force. Mm -hmm. Lovely Warren, she helped um, change a lot of situations. Uh, they go through the, the rigmarole board, they go through the, t the training, and then we get up to the last psychological test, they throw them out. So we're changing that.